Hi, Ben Atkinson here, author and director of HolyClubs.com. I'm thankful that you said yes to taking this journey to becoming a leader that's going to raise up a holy club. Remember, God has given you two amazing heavenly assets. He's given you people. He's given you the lives of many to steward. And at the same time, He's giving you revelation. And you're creating a way for people to encounter the revelation of God. And that's tremendous. Here I am in our nation's capital. Of course, you can see the capital building behind me. That's part of our leadership training. We wanted to come here from our nation's capital and talk about leadership that will, will transform our communities. But today I want to ask the question, why holiness? We want to talk about and really dig deep into why holiness? What is holiness and why holiness? And, uh, a lot of times people say, I don't want to get into holiness. I don't do that. And the reason they're saying that is because they don't understand it. If they understood it, they would say yes to holiness. They would invite their community into holiness. Let me read a scripture. First Peter, a chapter 1, verse, I want to read through 13 and on. Now, remember Peter. Peter was the fisherman. He was zealous for the Lord. He wanted to do the right things. But God came up to him one day and said, Peter, in the beginning, he said, you're a rock. I see you as a rock. He, 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 was, he was named a new name after encountering Jesus. And we want you to understand that with Holy Clubs, you're gonna, God's going to give you ordinary people, but God sees them as those that will do extraordinary things. Ordinary people called to do extraordinary things. I want you to understand that as they're writing, as they're texting God, they are going to walk in holiness. How do I know? Well, right here, I read First Peter, and I look at Peter's life. And I read this, and, I, and th this comes alive to me with Revelation. 1 Peter 1, it says, Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust, as in uh, ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it's written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct. You received tradition from your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb who was without blemish, without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times to you, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead, and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Here's what I, I want to really drive home today. Why holiness? Number one, holiness is who God is. In fact, one of the groups you'll get to talk about he's both love and he's the fear of the God you can't separate that it really is it's, it's who God is if one of the four living creatures would have come to earth right now what would they preach on what would they teach on they would talk about the holiness of God they stare at God they gaze upon the holiness of God and from that these songs erupt holy 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 and this is exactly who God has called us into. We've got to get a higher vision of holiness. Holiness is the most enjoyable, most pleasurable, the most awesome, the most supreme, the most magnificent place. And so from this place, we want to see the glory go forth and touch those around us. Holiness is who God is and what He's invited us into. And I want to encourage you that that is, is the, the, the invitation is to become like Him. The invitation is for the highest place of pleasure. Let me tell you a story, and, and I want you to read it within this and help you understand within your leadership. Imagine there's a young gal, or, and she's, she's homeless. She has nothing. Her parents are gone. Her, she is without hope. Her heart is destitute. She's living in shambles. She has nothing. She's homeless. And all of a sudden, the president comes along and, and opens up the limousine and says, come on in, I've got the billion dollar check for you. Here you go. And hands that billion dollar check to that young gal. And she has that check. Now, is she a billionaire? Well, yes and no. She's a billionaire, but she first has to go in and cash that check. She first has to take that check and go to a bank and get it. 
Holiness is like this. God has given us the billion dollar check. And he's saying, here's what I have for you. However, we've got to go in and take $100 deposits at a time. We've got to go to this bank and this one and this one. We've got to search out the knowledge of God here. We've got to search out the character of God here. We've got to search out the pleasure of God. We've got to go and seek Him out. And as we do, He's so multifaceted, multidimensional. He goes on and on and on and on and on and on. For a billion years, you can never get to the beginning of the holiness of God. So I want to encourage you with this. God has given us His holiness, but we've got to access it. Israel had to actually access. They were given the promises, but they had to rise up out of Egypt. They had to go across the Red Sea. They had to journey day by day. I want to encourage you, holiness is a journey. It's a journey you're called to, and you're not called to anything else. There is no plan B. God said, become like me. It's really awesome. Let's go on a journey to do this together. I want to encourage you. So number one, holiness is who you're called to. Number two, it's the most joyful place. Thirdly, you have to access it. You've got to take your group on a journey. As a leader, think about the Israelites. Think about Moses. And he was he knew that he was taking them somewhere, yet they had to rise up. And even when they got close, they stopped and said, some of them were like, let's stay here, let's stay here. Let's remember leeks and onions in Egypt. When was the last time you were uh, looking about for leeks and onions? <laughs> My point is, God's got a target for young people. God's got a target for this generation. Take them on the journey. The best is yet to come. Amen.